This is God's time. Amen. So I just want to thank you and say I love you. Amen. You can't do nothing about it. No. Our strength comes through him. Yes. It's just amazing what all he can do. And the ones he touches and the ones that ain't been touched yet, they're going to be touched. Amen. Amen. He's there for us when we want him or not, he's still there. You know what? I made the statement. Some people, I've heard people say, well, I do good, and, you know, I'm I'm fine, and I don't pray. I'm not a Christian. I said, somebody's praying for you. Amen. 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 Well, they said, I come through, test, and it was all, all good. Well, that's great. Somebody's praying for you. I believe that. I believe Almighty God intervened on your behalf, whether we know it or not. How many times about almost been in a bad wreck? And... You know, there's no such thing as luck. It was God intervening. Amen. Amen. Well, I take uh, shots for cholesterol, but I can't take them. I can't take the pill or anything. I wish, I want to, if y'all would pray for me that I can get this down, I'll be really tired. Take that. Amen. One side of my neck, I can walk off the other side. I have it so bad. Well, you need to be praying. Amen. Amen. Uh, heard about a, a lady, true story. Her, uh, she was one of the worst diabetics, one of the third worst diabetics in the United States, recorded. Mm -hmm. She became allergic to insulin. Oh and God healed her. Amen. 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 I, I thought, you know, impossible circumstances, that's when God comes on the scene a lot of times. <laughs> Amen. Turn with me, go to the book of Romans. We get right to the message. Romans chapter 13. I want to read this. Start with verse 10. This is one that gets us right here. Romans 13 and 10. I'll read 10 through 14. Great verse. I love it. We all have a duty to our neighbors. Amen. We have a duty to one another. Who is our neighbor? You know. Verse 10 says, Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to wake up sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. But put you on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh, to fulfill the lust thereof. In verse 11, he says, And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. You know, I've had people say, Listen, it's time for you to do this and that. I'd, I'd be a kid, and uh, I'd be outside, and Mom would holler for me to come in and eat or whatever. She says, Mark, it's time. Come on. And then she'd say, Listen, oh boy, it's high time you got in here. Let her happen any of y'all. Mm -hmm. uh, different mothers, but yeah, the same thing. You know what I'm saying. Listen, God is calling people. It's it's time that we make sure we're right with God. But it's high time we make sure. I wanna I wanna bring this out. A lot of people will say, "Well, I'm all right." They say, "My my mom and dad were Christians. My grandma and grandpa were Christians on both sides. That's wonderful." But how does that help you? See. Oh, yeah, they're Christian heritage, but we all have uh, to come to Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? We all have to. Now, you should want to, but I want to, before I get started, would you bow your heads for a word of prayer? Father in heaven, Lord, again, as we approach your throne in Jesus' holy name, Father, we're so dependent upon you today. Lord, we are like a child, Father. We couldn't, we'd lose our way if it wasn't for you. Father, we pray for guidance, direction. We pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to come. Father, we pray that you'll speak in this service, God, this immediate service, and all the others. Father, where you see fit to bless, God, we pray that men and women will hear, Father. They'll hear your voice, and they'll know that it's time for them to come out of sin, Father, into the light of the gospel, Father, and they'll accept you as Lord and Savior. Father, we pray that prayer today. We wish it on everybody that, Father, people can open their eyes and realize this is time for them to make things right with you. Father, we love you and praise you. We ask God, you be Sister Benny. Lord, as her request was made known, help her, God. We pray, Lord, this cholesterol medicine, Lord, and 
Father, we know that you give the doctors the knowledge to do what they have to do, Father. And we pray that you'll be with all, Father, here today. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. 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 How many's ever heard of the, the tale of two cities? I, as it starts, it says it was uh, the best of times, it was the worst of times. I thought, what was it? What was it? I remember Lucille talking about the Great Depression. And she said one time, I think uh, she was getting ready to deliver a baby and the doctor came and he fell off the walk log into the creek and he got the flu and they had to doctor him before he could do anything with the family. She said, it was a bad time. She said, but you know what? During the depression, she said, the bad times, we made every effort to enjoy what we could. Amen. And I remember dad talking about how bad things were. Charlie Crouch, I remember Charlie uh, talking about what a bad time it was. You know, different people. And I, I wasn't there. Some of you remember. You remember hearing about it. But, you know, I thought about this pandemic thing. And I don't want to get much attention to it, but yet it is what it is. And I thought God can work and none can hinder during any time. Amen. Amen. But men and women, I thought if they close the churches, I thought people, and I, and I was shocked at this, I thought people would be banging on the church door wanting men. Much to my surprise, it didn't happen. People listen, the church sets the, the tone. And I thought, when God's people want to worship the Lord, in this day and time, my friend, we need to stay close. Amen? Amen. We need to stay close. Let me go on. I thought about this. In some instances, God gives us knowledge about the time, uh, what, what to do, how to act or react in it. I know the disciples, when Jesus ascended into heaven, I believe just exactly what Acts chapter 1 says. Amen. I believe the Lord went out. And they said, Lord, they said, uh, will, will you restore the kingdom uh, back to Israel at this time? And he said, it's not me for you to know the times and seasons. Amen? That the Father put in his hand. They want Israel to be restored to the world power again. Christ set up a kingdom, but it's in here. Amen? It's a spiritual kingdom. And they were looking for, they're still looking for a literal kingdom. It, it's a spiritual kingdom. And I'm reigning in it right now. Amen? If you're saved, you are too. But they, they said at this time, and he said, it's not me for you to know. You're, you're not going to know the times and seasons. But there's some things God gives us knowledge to know about. Amen. My friend, that's our eternal destiny. What are you doing about it? I've talked to, to friends and family, different people. And I thought, I've never seen a time when you can't get people to wake up to the reality they need God more than anything else. Amen. I've never seen a time like this. And, and, and they listen to this one and that one. And and this preacher and that preacher, I thought, get your nose in the Word of God. Amen? Amen. And the Holy Spirit began to deal with you. My friend, that's how it works. Amen? Amen. Oh, I'm trying to preach truth, but I'm saying you need to read and make sure I'm preaching truth. Amen? Amen. And so many people uh, are, are following whatever. One man studied sheep, and he said, one thing that amazes me, uh, a, a sheep that is sick will follow anybody. He said, it, it amazes me. He said, now, most sheep, they'll follow the head a sheep or the shepherd. He said, but if a, if a sheep is sick, they'll, they'll, wave, they'll wave her off. My friend, we need to stay close to the shepherd. Amen? Amen. And close to God. God gives us knowledge to make things right Amen. while we have a right mind. Brother Harold Taggart and Morgan wrote a song, and, and, and it touches you. That, and, and, and the gist of it was this, that what time we have that we make, make it right with God. Amen? He said, I may wake up tomorrow and not know who I am or where I am. Come on. Yeah. Dad was campaigning in a nursing home one time. And I told this, but it amazed me. He went up to this lady and said, Ma'am, you know who I am? She said, No. She said, Did you see that nurse over there? Dad said, Yeah. I said, Go ask her. She'll tell you who you are. <laughs> God's <laughs> Sometimes we're not as well known as we think. God's time is always the right time. Amen? Amen. God's way is always the right way. Amen. The, my, my heart breaks when I think of people that's trapped in sin and all they need is to accept Jesus Christ and it's going to be made plain for them. Amen. Amen. Uh, I, they, uh, they tell us there's a, a great percentage, not that this is common knowledge among us, but uh, the information to hand. They said there's a lot of people, they, they struggle. They're teaching in school now about children. This is the time we live in. That you don't know what you are. God will show you if you're a boy or girl as you uh, mature and you grow up. Listen, you're a boy or girl whenever you're born. Come on. Amen. It could be nothing else. Amen. They say it's a high percentage of transgender individual that commit suicide. 
Why? They have uh, no idea. They don't know who they are. Listen, get saved. God will show you who you are. Amen? Amen. This is the time we live in. Yeah. And I thought, you know, children are telling me uh, no people are born that way. I said, no. And I thought, it don't look good me arguing with an eight-year-old. <laughs> but I said, no. No. You're, you're, you are who you are. Come on. Amen. They said, well, God makes mistakes about God never makes a mistake. Come on. Amen. See, the time we're living in, people are questioning the authority of Almighty God. And I thought, us as parents and, and, uh, and grandparents, friends, neighbors, whatever, I thought, this is the time we're living. It's high time. The church awakes out of sleep. Amen. 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 And takes a stand. Amen. Amen. It's high time the Christians in Bath County would take a stand Amen. against its evil. Amen. Come on. I can't understand it. Because the well on one hand, well, you know how I feel about it. Amen. Come on. Amen. But I thought on one hand this, on one hand that. I thought on one hand is God, one hand is the devil. Come on. Amen. Amen. And that's uh, the hour of society's run. Davis. And I thought God's time is obviously the right time. But it was a boy, I got lucky. I got lucky. Luck is not even in the equation. Dude, this story always amazes me. As two men were mining uh, out west in a, in a shallow river, they were mining for gold. I'm not panning like the, you see the old prospectors and people do it. They had uh, a pump. They were It was like a giant vacuum cleaner. They were little, uh, literally sucking the sediments off the bottom of the shallow river. But all of a sudden, an avalanche came, and it pinned this one under the water. He was pinned under about four inches. Uh, th th he couldn't breathe. His friend freaked out and started screaming, help, help, and he couldn't get him free. Two men came from out of nowhere, and they came to his aid, and the man was saved. They got, uh, they got uh, him out of the river, and, and he was fine. But here's what was miraculous about this. Both men uh, just happened to be, at this time, hiking in this uh, national forest, and they, they'd have permit to, to do this in this national forest, but they were hiking there, they were from Norway or Sweden, I forget where, but they just happened to be a train, both of them in underwater mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. And I thought, see, God was in this, amen. It wasn't luck, it was God that sent those men there at that right time, amen. amen. See, people say, oh, that man was so lucky, those people were there. No, no, he wasn't. People listen, God sent them, amen? amen? I thought we can see the handiwork of God when we step back and just look, amen? amen. Now it's high time to wake out of sleep. We wonder why people are not healed. We wonder why things are going on. I've told people that face internal illnesses. I said, make sure everything's all right. And I apply this medicine to me or anybody else. Make sure there's nothing between you and God or you and anybody else, amen? amen. amen. People listen, we got to come clean. You know, the Bible says that uh, all the, the backbiting and the bickering and uh, the backstabbing, it has to go. Amen. Amen. It has to go for God to work. Amen. It's high time that we awake out of sleep and do what God says. Amen. Amen. You know what? I've seen people that get on the phone, burn the phone on up. Well, I want you to pray about So They don't want you to pray about the one to gossip. Amen. Under the guise of prayer. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. Get say amen, say out. It's true. And I thought, so many times people have called me about the churches and I thought, wait a minute, you want to you want to uh, gossip or you want to pray about this? People, listen. We all need prayer. Amen. amen. I'll leave it that. But it's time the church stood. Amen. With God. Amen. amen. We need prayer more than anything else. Now, some of the greatest works our Lord ever did was at one of the worst times possible. We've got a, a way of thinking about things. And, you know, God's got a way. And God's way is superior to ours. I, I never will forget whenever Israel crossed over Jordan. As God told Moses, leave these people uh, into the land of Canaan, a land full of milk and honey. That was their intended destination. We know that they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Moses died. And the Bible said, God told Joshua, he said, now up over this Jordan. Take this land. It's yours. Take it. As they crossed over Jericho, it was one of the worst times they could ever cross. We used to farm across the river. And my grandfather owned some land in Bath County right behind their house. There was a leaking river. We had to, to ford the river. There's a certain time that you had to, to cross it. And when the water was down, I mean, it's obvious. But this, the Bible said Jordan overflowed its banks. You can't even see the river because it was up so big, the, the river channel, that is. The Bible said as soon as the priest, think about this. Here they went. As soon as the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant, according to biblical definitions, how they were supposed to carry it, Amen. They didn't put it on a car with cattle. They carried it like God told Moses that it should be carried. As soon as their feet hit the water, the Bible said, 
the river parted and they walked over on dry ground. I believe they're more of it. Amen. Amen. Brother, listen, it was the right time. It wasn't in, in their thinking, but it was more of a miracle. Amen. Because uh, the people of Jericho was watching. Rahab the harlot even told the spies. She said, we know God's going to give you the city. We know we're doomed. She said, remember me and my family. You know what? Jesus made mention of this. And I thought about that. Rahab is in the uh, genealogy of Jesus Christ. Amen. See, it's not what you've done in life. It's what you can do. Amen. Amen. If it was a well, lie, I failed. I failed. We've all failed. Amen. Amen. Some way, form, or fashion. But she was spared her and her family whenever Israel went over. But anyway, I thought about that. It was one of the worst times, but it was one of the best times God got the glory. Amen. I thought some cases are so severe, uh, it baffles medical science. And it's proof that God intervened. Amen? Amen. Amen. Skip Fanner was dying with, inter uh, with incurable brain cancer. And he said the, the Cleveland Clinic, they put him there to die. He said he got saved. Amen. Amen. He got saved. He said he walked to the window and he said, look, green grass, green grass. Listen, when you get saved, everything's new again. Amen? Amen. And you're born again. Praise the Lord. They said, Mr. Fanner, you can't, you can't go on. Stop. They said, if you get a blown ahead, it'll kill you. He said, I've been saved. He said, God saved me, gloriously saved. Amen? And the time that he got saved, God restored his memory. God helped him and gave him his life back. Amen? Amen. Listen, God can work and none can hinder. Amen. But it was one of the worst times a man with uh, uh, intern, uh, incurable brain cancer could get saved. I thought God can reach. Amen? Amen. The love of God can go where we cannot fathom. Amen? Amen. But he said, while he's in a coma, God dealt with him. I feel led to tell this. While he's in a coma. See, we don't know. They said, when somebody's in a coma uh, situation, talk positive to him. He said, I knew everything everybody said. Knew who my friends were. He said, I couldn't respond back in a coma. He said, but I knew them. Knew what they were saying. He said, they'd come in, they'd say, well, Skip's wife's young. Here he's going to die. I wonder if she'll remarry. He said, I was laying there and you could hear him knowing who they were. He said, I always talk positive. I thought, I wonder what we've said in front of people. God help us. He said, I'll just stop pausing. But nevertheless, my point being, it was one of the worst times anybody could ever seek God, but he got saved during that time and lived to tell it. Amen. Amen. But listen, God is awesome. Amen. The woman's a well. Here she had had failed relationships. She was embarrassed. She was uh, uh, like marred in the, in the eyes of society. Yet she had to draw water sometime. She went out an odd time, and Jesus Christ just happened to come by at that time. Amen. Amen. See, Jesus comes by at odd times in our life. Amen. I never thought I'd get saved at 3 o'clock in the morning in somebody's living room, but I did. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's not uh, where, it's, it's when. Well, as a man was walking in his barn, he said he had fought conviction and fought it. He said he knelt in his barn uh, right there in the highway of his barn. He said, Lord, save me. He said, forgive me, please. He said, God, forgive him. Amen. Worked with a man. He said, I got saved at my machine at work, Mark. He said, God spoke to me. He said, I knelt down right there and got saved. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Listen, then knowing the time, we don't know if we've got another day. Amen. Come on. Amen. I don't try to scare people. I'm just telling you, we don't know. God's time is, is the, the right time. Amen? Amen? And let me make one more point. In the worst times, God can work. I've thought about it so many times. I'm amazed at this story. They say that uh, after a while, um, and not to be gross or nothing like that, but they said that when when a body is decaying in the in like a, a hot weather or whatever, unlike the Lazarus, here Jesus Christ delayed going to pray. Uh, they said your friend Lazarus is sick, and Jesus delayed it, and then he finally said Lazarus is dead. He said, but we go. He said we're going to go, but because of the the grace of God and the the wondrous works of God can be made manifest. Amen. Amen. The Son of God went. And I thought how that Mary and Martha both said, Lord, if you'd been here, you hadn't have died. But he said, where have you laid him? You know, and you think of that. They, Martha said, Lord, he's, he's been dead for four days. He's stinking now. That don't matter. Amen. I know it's going to be lunchtime a little bit, but listen. The, listen, we need to think about this. Four days dead and right on time. Amen? Amen. As Jesus went, and I believe it's on my heart. One day, one day we're going to hear our name. I think about that old song. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. My friend, we all will. And I thought, I hope we've lived a life worthy of heaven. Amen. Well, come on. Amen. 
that knowing the time, time, time to wake up and sleep. I've seen people say, well, I was saved years ago. You don't know if they're Christian. Don't even know. It. Well, come on. Amen. One man worked with somebody for 20 years, never knew he was saved. Something wrong. Amen. Well, amen. People, you'll, if the best good intentions she's ever lived, if when they get saved, they said improvement in their life. Amen. amen. You'll know. You'll know the love of God. You'll know if somebody's saved and I've just been around them a few minutes. Amen? Amen. Not in a judgmental way, but just in a factual way. But Amen. when he said, Lazarus, come forth. I thought, here he comes with these great clothes on. And he said, loose him and let him go. Amen? Amen. Then we come into the light of Jesus Christ. Amen? He had been, but Jesus called back. They said one reason Jesus wept was to bring him back to this sin-cursed world that we live in. Amen. For whatever reason, he came forward. Amen? But my last point, I made it several times, it's true. If he had said, come forth, every, everybody in that tomb would have come forth. Amen? Because yeah, he is a resurrection and alive. One day, he'll be coming for us. Amen. It's time. And that knowing the time, that it's high time to wake up and sleep. You know what? I've heard people say, well, you know, I, I can't do much. If you fill a pew, you're doing a lot. Amen? Amen. I've heard this. People say, well, I'm not this. God didn't call me to do it. God calls us to be faithful. Amen? Amen. God calls us to be faithful. My friend, God calls us to love and serve Him. I've seen people, they'll go out and they'll somebody's yard, they'll do this and that, and that's good. That's good. But me and one of my Christian friends is talking about this one guy. And I said, what? What's he do that for? He said, he thinks he's getting points toward heaven. I said, what? He said, yeah, by, by him doing good deeds, he thinks that's helping him toward heaven. I said, but, you know, you must be born again. He said, I know that. But in his way of thinking, he thinks the more good deeds he does, the, the more that'll uh, get him points with God. Listen, God doesn't work on a merit system. Amen. No, 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 no. We, we talked Wednesday night how that you're redeemed without money. You're bought back without money. It was the blood of Jesus Christ Amen. that brought us back to God. Amen? Amen? And that's what keeps us to God. My friend, what about you? It's high time. I'm not going to hold you my song, but I'm going to ask them. It's high time to wake out of sleep. The night is uh, far spent. The day is at hand. Let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. What that's saying is take your pajamas off and your work clothes off. Amen. That's what that means, basically. I heard about something the other day. I thought, boy, that will impress the boss. It's workable pajamas. They say you sleep in them, you can work in them. I thought, boy, the boss will really like that. Come on. People, we can put on this facade. We can act like everything's all right when it's not. You know? We can act like that uh, we're really uh, gung ho about serving the Lord and never mention Jesus to anybody. People, I believe this is a name worthy to be spread, worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. I've seen people that you thought uh, they had something wrong. Well, there was nothing wrong with them. They was everything right with them. They praise the Lord. I see my grandmother come in and say, "Oh God, it's so good to us. It'd be so hot outside." She had an old straw hat. Going to the garden is one of my fondest memories. She'd be singing hymns all day, happy as she could be. I thought, man, Ma, what? What do you have to be? She didn't have nothing of this world's good. Not one of the poorest people I ever met. One of the happiest people I ever met. Amen? Amen. It was a joy for me just to go to the hen house and gather eggs with her, just to watch her. I'm serious. Some of the best memories. Thank God for them. But I want to tell you something. Today, let's talk about us. It's time for you to wake out of sleep. What, what prompted you to get right with God? You know, God's spoke to you. God's. Uh, God's Extended the arm of mercy time and time and time again, my friend. Thank you. I felt led to preach this this morning. Listen, mm -hmm. it's time to wake out of sleep. It's time. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Amen. Amen. Today's the day of salvation. If you knew, and we all have an appointment with death, we all have an appointment. One more point. I'm going to close. God only gives us so much time. Amen. Think about that. God only gives us so much time. Uh, we got an hourglass at the house. I thought about bringing it and just put We're one of those grains in that hourglass. You ever think about it? Some people say, boy, you analyze things too deep. No, I don't. I thought, we're going through time. And some meet, uh, make the Lord faster than others. My friend, we're all going to meet him one day. Amen. But how is it with you now? Now. See, the now is what counts because we don't have a guarantee of another minute. We don't. How is it with you now? I want to let you and the Lord ponder that as we get a song of invitation ready today. Or friend, I can. How many times have you ever seen somebody? They, they get them ready. I've seen kids 
Mom used to get me ready for school. I'd be half asleep. She'd be putting my, my shirt on me and trying to slap me to get me to wake up. And, you know, it don't work that way for us. We all have to get our own self ready. Come on. One man said he wanted to strategically place deacons in the church behind people that were lost. I don't believe in that. And prod them to come, to talk to them and say, you didn't, you didn't get right. You know what? The Holy Spirit, that's his job. Amen. God speaks to us. And God, there's a pulling of the Holy Spirit. My friend, I ask you to let God lead you today, lead you home. As we stand today, 